Imagine for a moment that you live your life in chains, except the difference is these chains are invisible. It's a world where every single daily choice you make is controlled by something you can't even see. A world where at any time your government could cut off your access to your own money just because you've driven a few too many miles. And a world where the poorest among us will be given more reasons to struggle, while those at the top continue to live life the way that they always have. The truth is we could all be living in that world very soon. It's a world that is ruled above all by one thing, carbon. Before I get into this video, just a quick disclaimer. I am not a climate denier and I'm not pretending like carbon doesn't have an impact on our planet. I'm also not a climate scientist, so I'm not gonna be pretending like I know what's going on in our planet, but I am gonna be sticking in my lane and talking about the financial side of carbon and mostly the potential economic impact this could have on all of us as we move more into a carbon obsessed world. And also talking about the potential of carbon being used as a tool of oppression by those currently in power. There's a lot to cover. So let's get into it. But before I do, there is an amazing newsletter that people absolutely rave about. There's so many subscribers, 60,000 plus. So make sure you check it out, link in bio. By now, no doubt you've heard the news and you've seen the headlines and you've probably seen this girl talking passionately at the United Nations about the state of our planet. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction and all you can talk about is money. According to basically every news source around us, carbon seems to be the biggest threat on the planet right now and the best solution that we seem to have come up with is carbon credits. Currently, this is only something that big companies have to think about. However, this could all change very soon. This change could come in the form of PCA, Personal Carbon Allowance. In many nations around the world, large companies already have to purchase carbon credits in order to offset the carbon they're putting out in the environment. The theory is that the more a business pollutes, the more it must pay to undo the damage. But there are many who argue that these kinds of carbon limits should be placed on individuals too. As early as 2008, the UK government was exploring personal carbon allowances for each British citizen. In Sweden, the Royal Institute of Technology is currently heavily discussing the implementation of a PCA for Swedish citizens. And in the journal Nature, they've spoken about how the governments of France and California have explored a similar personal carbon allowance as well. On its own, this sounds pretty great. Of course, we wanna make people more aware of the actions that they take and how they're contributing to society and the state of the planet. Okay, so how would the government then track your individual carbon usage? Luckily, they have an answer for that already. I've spoken about this tool many times before on the channel and it's called a CBDC or the central bank digital currency. A central bank digital currency would be a fully digital currency just like Bitcoin. But unlike Bitcoin, it wouldn't be decentralized. Instead, a CBDC would be controlled by a nation's central bank and overseen by your government, which would give them the ability to track absolutely everything you spend your money on. But that's not the part that concerns people. One of the features of a CBDC is that you would make your money fully programmable, meaning that just like the rules of a video game, your government could put rules on how you spend your cash and potentially tell you what you can and cannot spend it on. A government controlling how you spend your money might sound a little bit far-fetched and you might be thinking that this kind of authoritarian control over your money is not going to be anything that we'll see in the future. Unfortunately, this is already implemented in the world. In China, the government is already able to program what its citizens can and cannot spend their money on. Over the last few years, they've limited millions of people's ability to buy things like train tickets, passports and luxury goods. They're able to do this because of China's intense social credit system that links each person's identity and actions to their bank account, allowing the government to see and to control everything a citizen does with their money. And it seems like the West is paying attention. In nations like Sweden, South Africa and Canada, trials of programmable central bank currencies are already underway. In fact, almost half of the world's nations are at some stage of implementing this kind of programmable money, meaning no matter where in the world you live, this technology is likely only only a few years away. Okay, so how does programmable money tie in with the personal carbon limit? Well, it all comes down to whether or not you've gone over your monthly usage. And if you have, there are two possible case scenarios for that. The most openly talked about penalty for a person going over their individual carbon limit is that they'd simply get charged for doing so. Just the same as what happens to large companies today. Taken too many car trips this month or bought a little bit too much meat. In that case, you'd simply get a bill at the end of each month from your government so you can pay the 
the price of being a naughty citizen. As your entire carbon usage would be tracked by a government CBDC, there would be no way to hide how much carbon you've used. And since they now also hold the keys to your money, they won't even need to send you a bill for your excess usage. Potentially, they'll just automatically pull your fine from your bank account. But there is a second, and in my opinion, a scarier thing that could happen if you do go over your monthly limit. And I'll talk about that in a second. But first, I want to introduce our sponsor, and that is Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Class topics on Skillshare include illustration, graphic design, photography, film and video, marketing, productivity, freelance and entrepreneurship, web development, and so much more. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're constantly adding premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Whether you're a dabbler, a pro, a hobbyist, or a master, you are a creative. Discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will receive one month worth of Skillshare for free so you can start exploring your creativity today. So now let's look at the second option of what could happen if you go over your monthly carbon limit and potentially this could give your government more ways of controlling your life and in order to do so we just have to look at what's happening in China. As we already know the Chinese government can already take away people's ability to buy certain items through a social credit system linked to their bank account which is exactly what your government could do as well when a programmable CBDC inevitably comes into play in the West and it's very possible they could use a CBDC to program your spending if you step outside the limits of your monthly carbon allowance. For example have you refilled your card too many times already this month? You could find that next time your card simply doesn't work at the pump. Or did you recently fly to the other side of the world to visit your family? Well, until your monthly limit resets, it's possible that you may not be able to buy so-called high carbon food items like coffee, meat, chocolate, or potatoes. Again, this scenario is just theoretical at this point. However, with the power of CBDCs, it would be very easy for governments to control your money in this way and to literally be able to cut you off from buying certain things you wanna buy because you've exceeded your monthly carbon limit. In short, this could really be the perfect tool in order to control the daily choices of a society and it would be in the hands of the people at the top. The types of people that are constantly talking about how dangerous carbon actually is. People like Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos and Prince Charles who regularly fly around the world on private jets while speaking about how important it is that we all lower our individual carbon output. Or people like the World Economic Forum's leader Klaus Schwab, who talks about making the world carbon neutral by 2050 while at the same time organizing Davos, a gathering of world leaders and elites that each year attracts a record number of the world private jets in one place, or celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio, the darling of the global environmental movement, who spends his time holidaying on the biggest yachts ever manufactured in Britain, a yacht that puts out as much carbon as almost 600 cars, a yacht that he also gets on and off via a helicopter. It seems like the people who talk most about how dangerous carbon is for the planet seem to be the most resistant to actually changing their own individual carbon footprint. And also, these are the same people that would have enough resources to buy the carbon credits that they need in order to live the lifestyle that they are continually living right now. This leads me to be considering who would be the biggest losers if carbon credits were actually to be put in place. And as always, it seems like it would be the people at the bottom of the economic food chain. It would be the poorest people in society who would be hit hardest by any kind of personal carbon allowance. People who are already struggling to make ends meet, who can't afford to upgrade their old diesel cars or get a brand new electric. Or those of us in society who don't have the extra budget to make more carbon conscious choices about food, clothing or lifestyle. Not only would these people struggle the most to lower their carbon footprint in the first place, but they'd also likely be the ones that would feel the biggest effects of a carbon tax if and when they eventually went over their monthly carbon limit. I do believe that we should all be doing our part in protecting this beautiful planet that we call home because without our home, we are not going to be alive. And I do think that humanity has a lot of room for improvement with consuming less and being really conscious about the types of decisions we make in our daily life. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be asking questions about what life might be like for most of us when personal carbon allowances inevitably become a part of our daily lives, especially when many of the people who talk about carbon the most seem to 
be doing the least to diminish their own carbon footprints, while at the same time doing the most to influence the carbon-obsessed future we'll soon all find ourselves to be living in. Sure, personal carbon limits could be the thing that humanity needs in order for us to progress into a greener future and to leave this destructive nature of humanity that we have currently behind us. But I do believe that we are able to also implement changes from a place of inspiration and joy rather than from some perceived authority figure telling us that we shouldn't do this whilst they seem to not be doing any changes themselves. Because from the evidence that we're seeing and from the continued track record corruption of governments that we've seen in the past, it does seem that this could just be a tool for further financial imprisonment for those that are already struggling. So what do you believe? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. How can we make the future that we want rather than what somebody else wants for us? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being open to these ideas. If you did find value from this video and you think it will be important for other people to know about this, please do share this video. Also like, comment, subscribe. We would love to have you here. We have that amazing newsletter that people rave about. Link in bio if you wanna find out more and I will see you in the next one.